So Procreate 5 is completely revamping the brush section as we know now for Procreate 4 and on version 5, it's coming up with a new brush studio. That's exactly what we're going to take a look at for today's video. We're going to take a look at the brush studio as well as the new option for color dynamics. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper. So now let's get started. All right. Now that we're here on Procreate 5 for another sneak peek, we're going to take a look at the powerful new Brush Studio. So first things first here, uh, one thing that's really, really awesome about Procreate 5 is that we are getting that same amount of uh, default brushes, at least on first glance here. I haven't checked uh, every single one of these sections, but we are getting a special section here right at the bottom that says exclusive. So for those of you who are actually feeling a little bit jealous about some of the brushes on uh, Adobe Fresco, uh, Procreate 5 is going to give us all of these exclusive brushes right from the get-go. And who knows how many more brushes we will get once Procreate 5 is actually released. But this is already a really cool uh, addition to the uh, main section of brushes that we always had on Procreate. So the first one that I really want to uh, show you guys is this brush called Loon. And uh, let's just get a, a sense of what this brush does. And it's a really, really beautiful watercolor effect. So let's keep adding some different shades here. I'm going to get a little bit on the yellows maybe here. And you start to blend more and more colors. As you can see, you really get a nice effect and now let's start putting in some reds right here maybe more on this section at the top and uh, it's it's really really nice and responsive and as you can see you can drag the ink from your first stroke from where you start you can then drag drag the ink sideways or downwards, upwards, whatever you want the ink to go. Uh, so this is just one of the um, brushes, one of the new brushes that we're getting with the exclusive section. And look how nice it is to actually blend these colors. You can go in every direction uh, possible and uh, you actually get something really, really close or as close as uh, watercolor uh, paints would actually look like on a canvas. So just showing you guys a little bit more here. And then uh, just showing you a couple other brushes. Uh, this one called Latapuna. It's quite interesting as well. So you get this really nice textural effect. As you can see here, it's kind of like um, oil paint, but uh, done with a special tool, which leaves these like markings on a canvas. And let's just change colors again. Something like this teal. And once again, the brushes multiply in this really, really beautiful way. Uh, just take a look at the section here, how interesting this, this starts to become and just, um, might even just add some green here so you can see and just imagine the power of actually blending all these colors onto your illustrations but anyways guys the video for today is to actually go into the brush studio and not just be showing you uh, what these brushes can do on the canvas so in order for us to go into for to, for us to access the new brush studio i'm first going to duplicate this brush be able to play around with this brush and show you guys what it can do. So how do we actually access the brush studio? For that, you just have to click once into the brush that you're actually using or to the duplicate brush that you just made and you can access the brush studio. Also guys, I do need to say that for me to go through all of these options here, this video will be quite long. So I'm just gonna cut to the parts that I found most interesting as some sort of a, again, sneak peek or preview on what's to come. So what I really like right off the bat is that on stroke path, you have spacing, you have all these options and you see a much better preview here on the right side of your, uh, your canvas or your UI. And you can, once again, you can draw uh, the brush that you're currently working on and you see a live preview of that brush. 
So we also have the famous streamline, which makes uh, tweaks curves. We have the jitter of the brush, which I guess expands the source of that brush. We also have a uh, fall off. And that is also really, really interesting as some sort of uh, running out of ink for your brush. But what I really thought was much more interesting here right off the bat and clear is the tapering section of brushes. So if you actually had to tweak tapering before on other brushes on Procreate 4, you probably remember it's a little bit of a headache because sometimes you think it's working, sometimes it's not really working when you're really trying to uh, tweak some of these sliders. And as you can see here, you can tweak the beginning of uh, your taper, uh, the art, uh, you mean the beginning of the stroke or the end of the stroke with just these two very, un, uh, very clear visual sliders. And you can also link the tip sizes. So by doing that, once you move one slider, you actually see a quick update of the second one. So you have the size of the tapering right here. You have opacity levels you can do. You have the pressure of the tapering uh, according to the pressure you apply to the canvas. And you have the type of the tapering tip. You can go as a really sharp one or you can go a little bit more broad. Uh, you also have tip animation and that is when you, um, you add some animation to uh, your last stroke or to the motion that you actually have. Let me just get this erased. So again, just drawing strokes here so you guys can see. And really, really interesting is that I, I've, I've drawn these strokes with a pencil. So you see that when I'm doing with a touch, I actually don't have tapering. And that's why there is this option here at the bottom. Again, I'm gonna link uh, tip sizes. I'm gonna make it um, very uh, tapered. And I'm going to now increase the size and tip. So now when I draw with uh, my finger here, you see that actually does have tapering. So now I can either draw with my finger or with my pencil and I can have separate tapering options. So let's just say that everything that I draw with my pencil will have tapering and every, everything that I draw uh, with my finger won't have tapering, for example, if you're doing a specific illustration. And that is just super awesome to see that already set up here for Procreate 5. Uh, lastly, there is classic taper. I wouldn't recommend, I think it's better to actually just use the new features here for tapering. Then moving on, we have in the shape options, we have the famous scatter, which is something that we did have before. But as you can see here, it creates some really, really interesting uh, edges on the outlines uh, of your stroke. Uh, we have the rotation count. So you can make, I, I do believe that I think as you increase the count here, you're probably making uh, brushes that will take a little bit more performance of your iPad to actually work. You can randomize, you can uh, turn, uh, flip things on the X and Y. You can add grain and grain is the actual uh, sub texture that is applied to your brush. So if we play here with the scale, you see that it becomes um, way more greedy and we're really blowing up the texture. So that's something that sometimes you do wanna play around. Sometimes you don't wanna actually mess around too much because it loses the quality and the basic properties of that brush. So you do have to be careful, but you can also swap out uh, the, the uh, grain texture itself, which is really nice, as well as you can have a different blend mode for your grain and for other parts such as the uh, blending of the brush. But now let's talk about the part that I thought it was also really, really interesting, which is the famous color dynamics. So how does color dynamics actually work? So say you do have a brush here and you can increase the color uh, by just raising the uh, hue and then the saturation here. Now we see that all of a sudden our brush is composed of multiple colors. So once again, I'm just gonna try to draw another brush here so you can really see how colorful things can get. And now we can tweak, for example, lightness, darkness. You can make like a more of a darker uh, color dynamic brush. And this is a slider that I thought it was really, really awesome. So what's the difference between secondary color slider and the hue slider? So on hue slider, you're basically adding all of the colors to your basic brush. Now let's stick down to zero. So we will go back to um, one of the main colors on our color uh, swatch that is selected. But now let's turn on secondary color to about 60%. I'm gonna hit save. And now I do have these two colors right here. And this is a little bit of a hint. 
is this a hint that Procreate is giving us that we will have gradient, uh, a gradient tool on Procreate 5? Because now we can choose, let's just select one color here, and we do have a secondary color that is completely separate from the primary color. So once again, I don't know if this is Procreate telling us that a possible gradient is coming up for 5, but in any case, I just wanted to show you guys that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. So let's create a new layer here and turn off this one, make sure we have our copy selected. And now look what happens when I'm drawing with this brush. As you can see, we have this really, really nice and beautiful kind of like foliage, kind of nature brush that is composed of two of our colors. We have the orange and the teal and composed together, they have this kind of a greenish kind of color. And that's all happening because here, editing our brush, I've actually taken down the color dynamics of the randomized uh, colors and dialed up the secondary color. So all of a sudden, the options for brushes are multiplied in beautiful ways. Basically, now we have options to blend two colors into a new brush. We can also add some color itself to those two colors mix. So now if I hit, um, hit save here and I'm just going to draw again and now we have added colors to that uh, brush that we've already created in like 30 seconds. We just tweaked that brush and it already looks super, super cool. Just imagine that now painted onto oceans, foliage and uh, other sections of your illustration, how cool and how beautiful your illustrations can get. And it doesn't really stop right there. You have colors based on color pressure and color tilt, so really there's so much to actually explore here on the uh, Brush Studio that Procreate is just opening a small door for our creativity. It is really, really awesome. And you still have speed, opacity, jitter. You have uh, other options here for your Apple Pencil. And finally, some of the general properties. So that basically covers uh, the sneak peek here on the Brush Studio. Again, I don't want to make this super, super long. I just wanted to show you some of the exclusive brushes that are coming up with Procreate 5, as well as the power of color dynamics. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now, my question for the comment section down below is, do you think that those two colors that we see in the color swatches could be a hint that there will be a gradient tool on Procreate 5. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to leave a like to this video if this was any helpful for you. And subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks, speed paint videos, and tutorials. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.